Holy cow! They got a 30 caliber light machine gun! Must take a shot. Yeah. The good old AR-15. It's so beautiful and so wonderful. And, uh, and, uh, what is this? <laughs> talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart actually both of these are but today we're just going to kind of be covering the old AK now some of you guys who are AK fanatics more than I am can tell right away that this is just a dirty old it's been riding around in the truck I know it's got mud all over it dirty old washer tan this one is a very this one is very near and dear to my heart this was my first real rifle and whenever I say real rifle let me just kind of go into a little bit of a backstory about this and this is where all you guys who want to just watch this video shooting I'm going to talk for a little bit this is commonly known around my family as old blood letter my my brother was supposed to go to college here about oh probably about 15 years ago quite a while ago and uh he went and he had a longhorn cow he was going to sell to pay to go to college with. Well, as some of you may know who are going to watch this video, that cow did not get sold for college money. He went to the sale barn, sold the cow, and came back. And he said, do not show this to mom and dad. But he pulled it out and showed me. And me being like 10 years old, I went and screamed at the top of my lungs, Garrett went and bought a Tommy gun. And then I learned later on that this was actually an AK. So, what happened was, is I got my first job building fence, and I went to the local Walmart, and I bought a Marlin 336 and 3030, and I came home with my one box of ammunition I bought for $25, and I tried to put some rounds through it, and it would not cycle, because it had not been finished being machined on the inside of the receiver. So, me being just heartbroken, and my brother thinking that he could maybe fix it, offered me a trade. He would trade me that 30-30 and a Mossberg shotgun for his Wasser 10 AK. I just got done watching MacGyver and I'd seen a few of them guys running around with an AK and I thought that'd be a pretty cool deal. And then whenever I saw what the ammo cost for that little 7 dollars $5 a box at a Walmart, oh man, I was all over that deal. So I went and bought this rifle and this was really my first rifle. Now as to where it got the name Bloodletter, that was when I went off to basic training. My beloved uncle went and babysitted it for me. And he rode around all summer long in a gator fixing fence, shooting possums, shooting shooting coons, coyotes, everything you can think of with his AK. And so it affectionately got the name Bloodletter from him. Now before I go into a little bit of the history of the AK and a little bit about the Wasser 10, let's take a few shots. Put my ears on here. So I can look all tactical and see what I cannot hit. Uh, let's try for that spray can right there. Well, hit that one pretty good. It sounds like I hit my cameraman with the brass. All right, let's see what we can do with these clays over here. See how many of them I can miss. Yeah, 
I'll try one more with that one up there. So, it shoots pretty good. All right, so a little more into this rifle. Um, like I said, young me, whenever I got this, I went and took, and I thought, as you can tell, it's not parkerized anymore. Because, once again, young me, this was my guinea pig for my gunsmithing. And I thought it would look really cool if it was chrome. Of course, I didn't know how to chrome plate, so I just went and spray painted it silver. I know, get all the laughing out of the way. I was very young at the age, at the time I did this. So, once I got all that out of my head, and I went and I kind of was like, well, I just ruined the finish on this thing. I'll go ahead and I'll try to spray paint it black. And so I spray painted it black with some Rust-Oleum, and it's held up decently ever since for being an old truck gun that I carry around everywhere um but yeah it's as my brother would say it's been through the fire before and I'm sure it can take a whole lot more he says that because he thought it was funny whenever I put it in the oven to heat up and cure the paint <laughs> and uh oh yeah my brother by the way he would like me to mention that he did in fact go to college it just took a little longer because he went and sold his Cal and bought an AK with it. All right, so now we are going to get into the meat and taters of the AK history itself and kind of into a little bit of the Wasser 10. So I'm just going to give a very brief history. The AK story starts in 1945 in World War II on the Russian front. It, uh, there was a young tank driver named Mikhail Kalishnikov. He got injured, got wounded. And he decided while he was in the hospital that the Russian military needed something a little more effective than a Mosin Nagant for a bolt action rifle or a carry weapon for, you know, your duty rifle. So he came up with several designs, and I'm not going to get on all of it, but eventually he came out with something that kind of like this, but not quite. It had a milled receiver, and it was known as that was the actual AK-47. You'll hear that all over the news while well, they used an AK-47. No, nine times out of 10, what you'll see nowadays is an AKM or an AK-74. But that was how the real AK-47 came along. Now they figured out that they did not have the technology yet to make everything hold together with a milled receiver. So they went and they made this wonderful stamped receiver. And those were affectionately known as the AKM, or I don't know the Russian word for it, but it basically stands for AK Automat Kolejnikov Modern. Automatic Kolejnikov Modern. So that kind of went along, and that was pretty much where this kind of design came up. Now this rifle itself is a Wasser 10, and you've no doubt heard all sorts of horror stories by now about how terrible the Wasser 10 is, about the canned front sights. Well, I'll tell you, this one is no exception. It has slightly canted front sights, but if you couldn't tell, I can hit really good with it for some reason. Kind of beats me. I don't know. You'll also hear stories about just how terrible they are and how worthless they are. This rifle has been beat up its whole life. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I take care of it whenever I can. I clean it, but it rides around in the truck. It's a shooter. And it it's held up. It's a really good little rifle. Uh, a lot of people complain about how short the stock is. Actually, I kind of like the way it points. It's a very good little pointer. The way that stock just sits there right in my shoulder, boom. It's perfect for that. All in all, I think, I don't know about the 1063s, but the Wasser 10s, I think they're pretty good for the money. Let's take a few more shots here so I'm not rambling on too much. We will, we'll go from right to left there. And uh, we'll start on that can on the right. Yeah, well. You ready? Mm hmm. Watch me miss. And let's go for that clay on that hill. It's pretty accurate. Let's see what the old 7.6239 will do to a water jug. Oh yeah, all right, how about that water jug over there? Ah, grazing. Ah, there we go. 
Let me hit a little lower there. There we go. Well, I think Allard can right there. Let's hit him. Yeah, she's a pretty good little rifle. Uh, oh yeah, another thing I need to talk about is the rounds this thing shoots. All right, so you'll see on the right is the 556 by 45 millimeter NATO. It's a 55 grain and it moves out of my little M4 clone here. It moves roughly about 2,800 feet per second. I need to get it on a chronograph, but that's what I've heard. On your left is the 7.62x39. Now, it's a 30 caliber bullet, whereas the 5.56 is only a 22 caliber bullet, and it's moving roughly at about 24, 2,500 feet per second. Once again, I need to get it on a chronograph, but that's the general opinion. All right, so now one of the common complaints about the 7.62x39 and the AK in general is that because the bullet is so much heavier, you're getting more recoil. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, you are getting a little more recoil than you are over like the AR-15 or the M4 carbine or the M16 with the 5.56. But to say that it really impedes how fast you can shoot with a rifle, well, I'm not a very good shot, but we'll see how, I got some old, I got some old jugs hanging out out there, empty of water, but maybe I can make them skip a little bit. We're gonna see how fast I can transition from target to target. So, go ahead and zoom out, if you would, a little bit there, cameraman, so we can get all the targets. All right. Yeah, if you hold it right, if you get the stance right, which I was doing kind of this number, which is more of an aggressive stance, it's not really recoiling all that bad. Now let's try the AR-15 for comparison. All right, so now we're going to compare it to the AR-15. Now this is my M4A1 clone. It's based off of the M4A1 I had while I was deployed. And if you'll notice, it's got a ACOG on it, which is a four power fixed four power optic and then I got this little thing up here, kind of just to replicate a peck, but it's really just for looks and for feel. But, so we're going to see, I had one guy tell me one time on the internet, I said I liked the ACOG. And he said, well, I can tell right now that you've never used rifle in combat, you're sitting in your mommy's basement right now, blah, 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 playing Call of Duty, because you can't use an ACOG in CQB. Well, mind you, it might be a little more difficult, but let's just see if that's true. All right, I'm going to start on these cans, and I'm going to shoot from left to right, and there's three cans right there, and then I'm going to go work on those three clays on that hill right there. Probably not going to hit anything, but let's give it a old college try. I would say it's effective enough for close quarters battle, but then again, that's just me. So, like always, we will police up the trash while we're when we're done, and uh, just keep shooting and have a good time. Till next time, see ya.